He's like, Kai, you got a hundred thirty-five thousand dollar check in your gym bag? He goes, Yes, uh, I forgot. I forgot to. I forgot to cash it. How you doing, everybody? This is Jimmy the Bull at MuscleMaster.com. I'm here today to share with you my personal power straps. I'll help you become the best power bodybuilder I could possibly be. Train through injury, gain strength. And now I'm going to share with you how you can get the extra mile in the gym, pushing and pulling and getting through the exercise. These are the best power straps you'll ever use. Go to MuscleMaster.com to get the full demonstration. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Rips and Rants. Yes, we are still here. This is week three. I guess someone likes the show, John. Uh, John Romano, my co-host, is joining me as always, and uh, we have a nice, we have a lot to talk about today. Yeah, I, I hate our intro music, by the way. It sounds like well, a seven. Well, you're supposed to do the intro music for us and change it, and he still hasn't done it. So, well, you know, he's he's working on it. He's an artist. He can't. You, you, you can't it's rush. It's twenty seconds. How much can he possibly have to do? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's the latest excuse was, yeah, you guys never, I called and no one ever called me back so we could talk about it. I go, Max, how much are you going to talk about for 10 seconds of music? And just just do it. it. Yeah, just <laughs> tell him to do it. You already have it done. Just download it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to apologize in advance for the vacuum cleaner noise, but because as, right. as Murphy dictates, the cleaning ladies show up right when the podcast starts. So. Of course. That's the way it always works. Well, I, I definitely want to talk about not right off the bat. I want to talk about the whole uh, Leo Rex uh, death and uh, go over some of the forensic footage with you. But yes, because we have to appease our critics who are incensed <laughs> over the fact that we didn't talk about it last show. Yeah, because he didn't die yet. You fucking morons. <laughs> That's true. He I didn't die. Yet. We... You know, the internet is a place. It's a wonderful place to be, yeah. but it spawns the greatest degree of stupidity I have ever witnessed anywhere in my life. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, for sure. Yeah. You know, the problem is, John, that the, the stupid people are the ones who actually comment. The ones who, most of the people who are actually intelligent and who enjoy the show, and everything, those are the people who just watch it and don't comment. Like, I don't, I watch videos all the time and I never comment on the video. Because I'm I'm just enjoying the video. I don't even I don't even think the comment. But the people that are bored out of their fucking minds and just want to be troublemakers and shit stirrers, those are the people who actually comment on these videos. So right. so it looks like there's a lot of people that are you know have these crazy ideas, but it's really like five people, you know. Right. Yeah. And yeah. The other fifty thousand who watch the show, you know, like the show and don't even have any problems with it. Because I, I always have people who con you know contact me and say. Don't don't worry about what that person said, or don't worry about. It. I said, believe me. <laughs> believe me, we don't worry. Didn't even go through, didn't cross my mind. Yeah, it's it's mind. entertaining. It really is because it's like the yeah. facelift thing. Okay, you got everything. Oh, you're gonna get a facelift. You know, when I was thirty, I thought anybody getting a facelift was fucking nuts too. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. Why would I do that? That's crazy. Yeah. Then you know, another thirty five years goes by and shit starts drooping, and you're going like. Well, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna, you know, revisit that thought. And I guarantee right. you, all of you naysayers now who have nice toned, taut skin are gonna think differently when shit starts moving around and you don't like it. Trust me. <laughs> true, true. Now, yeah. I, I got to give props to Chris Decito. Chris Decito has always told me that he is like a real estate like um, like prodigy because he studies it all the time. He knows all the buildings. In mm -hmm. Maine, in Port Portland, downtown Maine, he knows every single building. He even owns a couple of them, and he knows <laughs> all the buildings in in Miami, like in the area where he owns, where he has some condos. You know, he has a couple of units he owns in a few of those condos down there on Collins. Mm -hmm. So he, he sends me this screenshot of um, let me pull it up of Tom Brady. Tom Brady did like some you know like on Instagram, he did some like. Uh, I don't know, just talking about how much he loves his family and all this stuff, you know. So I'm like, what is Chris sending this to me for? Like, I really give a crap about what Tom Brady. 
background. What? <laughs> his building, the building is- in the background is his building where he has one of his units and he recognized it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Chris, if I owned the whole building, I probably wouldn't have recognized it. I said, and you recognize it. So that's hysterical. Yeah, that's probably yeah, Brady's got some five head, doesn't he? Unbelievable, right? Jeez, the big brain in there. Do you think he's got you think that's really his hair? Or you Why think not? he's got a you think he's it's, got a, a hair club on there? He was either born with it or he paid for it. Either way, it's his. Well, yeah, but I'm saying, do you think that's like weaved in or you think that's really his hair? Dude, I am the worst judge of that shit. My wife, we're watching something. My wife will, somebody will come on the screen and my wife will, within a nanosecond. I know, women what's know that. Wig he's wearing. I go, how the hell do you I know? know? I don't even, I never know. I can never tell. <laughs> <laughs> I, so now I just assume that anyone with good hair over the age of 40 has got a wig. This way it makes me feel better about myself, you know? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else did I want to bring up? Oh, you, you know how we were talking about eggs the other day? Yes. The egg shortage? Well, I got some insider information on the whole egg thing from my friend Dave Smith. And let me see if I can pull it up, if it even, if it even matters. Uh, where is this thing? Supposedly, the new thing is now that the, the reason why the, the, the there's no chickens and no eggs is because the feed that they've been selling has been tainted. Yep. And it's preventing the chickens from reproducing. From pre- preventing them from laying eggs. Actually, I. Oh, I, if I, they can't lay eggs, John, they can't reproduce, you know. Well, so, well, you know. But we don't care about them reproducing. We care about eating. So, well, eventually you have to replace the chickens too that are laying the eggs constantly. True, true, true. true. But the, the net result is no eggs, high price. So right. Purina, Purina is being sued. I believe they're being sued. But oh, really? They're, cha- they're tracing back the problem to the feed, and the and the majority of the feed is made by Purina, and right. the for, the farmers who switched from the Purina feed to a, a, organic, right. locally grown feed, all of a sudden the eggs, the chickens start laying. One guy right. said the chickens laying more eggs than they ever laid in the whole well, freaking history. Of yeah, the funny, yeah, you're right. So, and the funny thing is that, you know what, what happened? They actually were feeding the chickens like goat food and they, and, and, and they were laying like double the eggs they were laying before. So. Well, which that, is really interesting because technically chickens are scavengers. Right, they, they should be able to eat anything, right? Um, and and but they scavenge usually insects and stuff like that, you know. Well, but when you say scavenge, you basically you know any dead stuff. Well, they, they'll, they'll even eat other chicken if you if you cook it, you know. So, yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the fact that their feed, that Purina was able to stop them from laying eggs, I think, is significant because you know you can you can you can put the tin foil hat on now and say, yeah, this is a um. You know, this is this is the way to increase prices. You know, these these chickens or, get or create food. hysteria, John. And we'll you know, I mean, people. Yeah. Well, it's you know, like Biden hysteria. was recorded saying that he's got this either a plan or what some way to create this food shortage. He's got this plan to have a food shortage because he's so old and senile. He lets shit out of the bag. He's not supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> thank God for us, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. So, how I mean, embarrassing are we to the rest of the world that we have such a like a cuckoo bird? And in, in, you know, people thought that Trump was embarrassing. At least Trump knew how to had knew how to run a business. You know what I mean? Right. And this guy is, you know, and it's not. You know, I actually feel it's like your father or your grandfather. Like you'd feel bad for the guy. I don't. I don't dislike the guy. I just don't think he should be our president because his no, brain I, is not working right. I disagree know? with you. I, I, I he, he's he's a criminal. He has been. Yeah, but he, he doesn't even know he's a criminal. But for fifty, but for the last fifty years, he's been a criminal. Well, it's not, we put, it's not, but we put him into power when he's when he was the demented. I mean, the, well, well, he, he didn't how start dumb are we? This this has been ongoing. This this is ongoing. It's and he's crazy. running for president in twenty four. What? I mean, does he think he's he might not even know that he is president for all I know? He might think he's running for the first time. <laughs> he thinks he's running for the Senate again. Yeah, he, yeah. he doesn't know what he's doing. But you know, his his puppet masters know what he's doing, and right. this is all this is all a you know a big game. So it's disgusting. I guarantee you they're shorting they're they're purposely trying to short the food supply. That makes people panic, right? What, well, not what, only that, but but when you're a politician trying to buy votes. You want to solve problems. If there's no problem, you need to make one. So yeah. 
let me create this problem, make everybody suffer. Then I'm going to ride in like the white knight and I'm going to cure the problem. So, right. you know, it, it, but but it's not, nevertheless, all it is, is mitigating the ongoing detriment. It's not fixing the problem. It's like gas. Gas prices were going up. Now, all of a sudden, they've stabilized and gone down a little bit. So now he looks like a hero. Bottom line is it's still double what they were when he took office. So, you know, it's, it's just it's, it's 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 sleight of hand is all it is. Well, I, I'm only interested in the egg aspect as it pertains to us bodybuilders who try to get enough protein. And I'm a, I'm an egg eater. I eat eggs every morning, you know, and I, I like my eggs. And I, I'm paying the extra money. I don't care. You know, it doesn't matter to me what they cost. But it's not like not like the old days where I was poor and I was, you know, and I was eating 24 eggs a day. And, and, and it was costing me. It would have cost me a fortune. You know, nowadays, you know, I don't care. I'll pay. All right. I'll pay eight bucks for a dozen eggs and, you know, and I eat or 20, 20. I think it's 18 eggs for, for like eight bucks or something like that. Now, if you want to get the omega three eggs, they, they, if they even have them, thank God they've been having them at Publix. And I'll just buy, you know, a carton and that'll last me, you know, three days because I eat six eggs a day or five eggs a day, something like that, you know, and it doesn't matter to me, but it's you're getting people that, you know, have big families. They don't have a lot of extra cash. And, and that's that's a huge burden to them. So all these can't, people. Can't you, uh, can't you integrate some uh, some chickens and with the reptiles? Well, it's funny because all my neighbors, you know, I have a big piece of property. All my neighbors are getting chickens now, which is ironic because you have to feed the chickens and the chicken feed is also more expensive. So I don't necessarily know if it actually works out more, but my suggestion would be if you're going to have chickens, don't feed them chicken feed anymore. <laughs> my Give sister like has goat feed or something like that. You know, oh, yeah, goat feed it works even better. My yeah. sister has chickens and she gets yeah. how many she got five or six, and she gets five eggs a day. And her and my niece, you know, and she feeds them. My sister's nuts. She feeds them, you know, free range. They right. go there, you know. So it's she's really not buying them a lot of feed, but they should um, eat flaxseed. Flaxseed is really good. That raises their omega three content. You know, when you buy omega three eggs in the supermarket, what you're doing is you're 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 eating eggs from a chicken that's being fed a high flaxseed diet rather than corn because corn is shit. You know, corn. Corn creates a lot of omega-6 inflammatory fatty acids right, right. in the yolks. So, and that's chickens are not supposed to eat that. That's not what they eat in nature. They don't eat corn. Okay. There's no corn where they're where, you know, where they're they eat grass, insects, worms, uh, yeah, bugs, yeah, yeah. Worms, stuff like that. I mean, that, and that that's what you know, the the greens that they're eating, they turn all that into good usable omega-3 fats. And so really we've always skewed the chicken supply. And, and a lot of times they do that just because they want to fatten the chickens up. Bigger. They want to make them bigger, bigger chickens, more eggs, better meat if they're using them for for uh, killing them, slaughter, slaughter from food industry. And that's I mean, that's been the history of our of the food industry. I mean, same thing with cows. Cows. What do cows eat in in, in nature? They eat grass, right? You let them, right. but they they stuff them with grain, which is basically corn, because they want to fatten them up. So when they because when they sell these cows at the market, it's by the pound. So. Right. And they make them fatter, which makes the meat, you know, I guess more marbly, which is some people like that. It's softer, right? Mm -hmm. But the problem is it's marbled with omega-6 inflammatory fatty acids, you know, and and rather than if grow <laughs> hold on. One second here. It's usually me that does that. Every time I kick my foot underneath the um <laughs> underneath the table, I kick out the uh, cord. <laughs> you know, oh, there we go. So cows that eat grass, they can turn, cows can, we can't. Cows can turn grass into omega-3, DHA, EPA intermediates, which is what we need as humans to do all the good stuff in our body. So that's why it's important that they eat the grass. Now, a lot of times they'll do grass-fed cows but then they grain finish them what that means is like the last three four weeks before they slaughter them they just they don't even let them out and they just feed them tons and tons of corn to fatten them up to add it's like bulk dot it's like you know how like these actors will add will get fat for a part you know <laughs> it's like that's what they do to these cows so they if they can get another four five six seven pounds or ten pounds on them before they slaughter them they're going to get more money for the meat you know but they ruin the the integrity of the meat and with all the health benefits of it yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the 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 um 
the the beef industry is, is you know part of that uh, grass fed thing, but really, man, it's the fish. That's where we get the fish oh, convert all that ALA to, to to EPA and DHA. But then you got to worry about the big fish because of the mercury, and then yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all a big scam. Well, yeah, but the, you know, like the, anything farm raised fish wise, you're right, is is crap because they're feeding them. I hate to tell you what they feed them, but they feed I, them. Sure, at but. the best, <laughs> corn-based grain stuff. At the worst, I've he- I've heard that they actually will take the you know how when chickens eat you know corn they don't digest it completely. They'll actually take the chicken shit yep. and they'll put it throw it into the water where the where the farm raised fish are, and they just let the fish eat the rest of the corn so they don't waste anything. So they they're That's filthy. Absolutely true. They get so then the fish get sick from eating the poops and the, the chickens, so they have to give them antibiotics. So then they put antibiotics into the water. So now you're getting a fish that's not swimming anywhere. It's not eating any natural like algae and other other fish. Essentially, it's just eating basically corn that came out of a chicken's butt. And then they're on tons of antibiotics to prevent uh, infection. And that's the tilapia you're eating. Right. <laughs> right. I, I'm sorry to say. And same thing with <laughs> farm raised uh, salmon too. You know, it's you got to get wild caught. You know, or, or yeah. don't even bother. I mean. Look, if you're in a restaurant and you have a piece of, you know, regular Atlantic salmon that's farm raised, I mean, it's not going to kill you. But on a regular basis, you probably shouldn't be eating farm raised fish every, you know, if you eat a lot of fish like I do. I agree. The other thing is that, you know, people, their response to that is, well, if it's a tie in omega 6, I'll just take more omega 3s and balance it out. But the problem is, is that, you, is that the, the processing in your body is. Is, is the same for omega-6 and omega-3s, and they compete. So if you're overloaded with omega-6s, yeah. your body's processing that and not the omega-3s. Yeah. So, Well, you know. no, they, they balance each other because, ah, prostaglandin production. Yeah. So the omega-6s cause the, uh, the, uh, the inflammatory prostaglandins to be produced, and the omega-3s cause the anti-inflammatory omega, omega, uh, prostaglandins and then they balance each other out, assuming you're getting the right ratio. Yeah, but you're not. You the four-to-one ratio it's, it's, is what it should be, but every, Americans are like 50-to-one. Yeah. You're one. Yeah, you not getting it because when you eat a piece of farm-raised fish or chicken or beef that's all, you know, fed corn, you're right. getting so much omega-6 that you couldn't – you could take a whole bottle of omega lies and you probably still wouldn't neutralize all the omega-6s in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's okay to get some omega-6s because you want some inflammation in your body, especially as a bodybuilder, to grow. You don't want to be all anti-inflammatory. Um, that was always Blackman's like, yeah, I got to have beef once in a while a day. You got to raise the inflama- inflammatory prostaglandins, you know, balance out. I think I'm holding water in my ankles because of it. Too much anti-inflammatory. So <laughs> – but he's right, you know. So you want to have some, but um, the problem is that we we just get way too much omega six, and that and that's what predisposes us to like you know plaque formation in the blood vessel walls and and high cholesterol and all those you know wonderful things. So you want to keep it balanced, and uh, if you just you know like I said, the thing with fish is that you can get wild caught fish still. You're not going to find you know wild raised chickens, unfortunately, unless you're killing them yourself in your backyard, you know. So most yeah. of those are probably going to have some, you know, some omega-6 pro-inflammatories. And that's okay. Like I said, uh, if you can get – I just bought for Amanda at the Publix. They have now um, – they probably have had it for a while. But they have grass-fed uh, ground beef at 90%. I'd never oh. seen 90% lean. And you can make hamburgers and stuff like that out of it. Mm-hmm. And that, that's great. You know, that I'll eat that because that's probably really healthy for you. You know, they actually yeah. say that the omega-6 – the omega-3 – content of, of, of beef, grass fed beef is actually higher in omega threes than the what you find in wild caught salmon, which seems oh, wow. unbelievable, but it's true. That's yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other thing the other Blackmanism is the ALA. We you, you glossed over it a minute ago. And you people got to remember this. Yeah. The human the, the of the three omegas, a, DHA, EPA, and, and ALA, the the human body only uses DHA and EPA. It cannot it has to convert the ALA to either DHA right. or EPA? Yes. When, right. And our the conversion in our body is very inefficient. Ten percent, yeah, ten percent, only ten percent. So, so that's why you eat the fish and the beef because they already did it, you know. Yeah. But like Blackman yeah. couldn't grasp that concept, no. you know. <laughs> ah, you got to eat the seeds and, and, and the algae. <laughs> the, the omega three, uh, the ALA or alpha linolenic acid is actually the parent compound. It gets converted into EPA, DHA. So 
you know, if you if you use flaxseed oil, it has a lot of ALA in it, but it has no, it has almost none. I don't think it has any DHA EPA oh. in it. And if we only converted it ten percent, think about that. You'd have to eat hundreds and hundreds of grams of the stuff to get what you need. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Bill, that was a big Bill Phillips thing. If you remember back in the 90s, he was a big on, on omega threes, but right. he was a flaxseed advocator and everyone was using flaxseed because I, mean, I always thought it tasted disgusting, but right. um, you'd pour it in your shakes and stuff like that just because he told you to. But no one knew that it didn't efficiently convert to, to DHA EPA very efficiently. We learned that later on down the road. So, yeah, you know, so that's something to consider for sure, you know. Uh, so, if you have the ability to have your own chickens, that might be time to uh, invest. You know, I'm always worried, though, because, you see, we have coyotes here that come out at, at night. Yeah. So yeah. you have to almost get your chickens. You have to have a coop now. Now you have to get – I got to buy a coop with the chickens in the coop because I don't think we don't want the, the, the coyotes to kill the chickens. It's it's almost too much. My neighbor actually has a lot of chickens, and they actually – it's funny. They were selling eggs. They have, like, a little sign in front of the house. If you want eggs, they're, they're this much redundant. <laughs> And I was always making fun. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't need GIs. I'll go to the supermarket. Now I'm thinking, <laughs> just roll it over here. <laughs> Four dollars a dozen sounds like a pretty good deal now, if we compared to what they're selling them for in the supermarket. You know, I bought I bought last night six dollars and fifty six cents for a freaking dozen eggs. Wow, like nuts. But yeah, it's more yeah. it's more here because I have to get the. Uh, the omega three ones, and I and I and I like the extra larges. I don't like the large ones. I think they're too small. Yeah, me too. The jumbo ones. The thing you said about the chickens before, you know, they're they're. I, I, this guy did a video on on YouTube, and he he bought this chicken at Walmart, and it was yeah. a whole chicken, and he held it up. It looked like a caricature. The legs were like this big, and the breasts were like this big, and the rest of the chicken is like anorexic. I go. <laughs> How the fuck did they do that? How did they, they only let them? They only let them bench press, John. They don't let them do anything else. They don't was, train it, legs. <laughs> it was amazing. Well, because you know, they don't they don't run around, John. They they keep them in these. They they don't move these chickens. They don't, right. they don't let them move. So they of course they have a lot of muscle in their chest because they got to bump the other chickens out of the way. But you know they don't run around, so they have no leg development. No, but the leg, the drumstick's freaking huge. Yeah, they like mom, oh, the, oh, the drumsticks are big too. The drumstick and the breast, two most popular oh. parts. The drumstick and the breast are freaking myostatin. Eating. They give them that follistatin, my John. <laughs> they, they have it myostatin. But you know, I, I told my mom, and she goes, "You know, you're right," because she said I was watching a movie, the an old movie the other day with Cary Grant and you know somebody else, and they were out in a, him and the girl were out on a picnic, and they're eating, you know chicken on the picnic yeah and he said, she said their little the little tiny leg was like a like a like, like a drumette you know from the wing and she, that's yeah. how chickens have progressed over the years and that well, we they have selectively breed them also yeah to be right. bigger breasted and bigger uh bigger, bigger legs, legs and, and bigger that, breasts yeah. yeah i mean ima imagine if uh you know eating big rammy as opposed to eating like you know like a like a you know like a like a skinny guy, like a little uh, bikini competitor or something like that. You're going to get a lot more meat from Big Ramy, you know? So yep. that's just, just the way just, it works. Yeah, another, another source of frustration. For Have me. you seen the dogs recently, these little bully dogs? I know Flex Lewis was breeding them for a while. Yes, the little miniature bull There's dogs. a guy down the block from you who breeds. Let me pull these things up. They look like the little body the, 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 the pro Yeah, they are. They're really cool, but they're tiny. Little. They look like toys. No, but the, the toys, they're, they're like, they're like, they got bigger arms than Lee Priest, these things. But they're little, though. They're small. Yeah, they're because just, they breed them. Like the compact ones, the little miniature ones, or the giant they're, ones. They're, they're, these things go for a lot of money. You know who breeds them? I don't know if he's still doing it. John Scuderi breeds them. Oh, really? Yeah. He breeds all kinds of shit. Yeah. He, oh, yeah, those those little muscular guy. Yeah, those things. They they're look like, like little, uh, they look like Troy Moore. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I love you, Troy. <laughs> no, they're, they're little, short, little, stocky, little thing. Think about that. We, we didn't have dogs like when we in, in the seventies. There were no dogs looking like this. They, they all them. had long legs. You know, yeah. there, there was no dog with a short. Look how short these legs are. Could you imagine giving that dog like you know Deca and Anadrol and, put, <laughs> and I'm sure, and I'm sure there are plenty of people that do it. I'm sure and playing tug with a tire with him and all you know every yeah. day. He was, yeah, he was huge. I knew this this crazy guy back in the day. I used to go to his house. He's like, he used to tell me he had a rabbit. My right, rabbit is cycling. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's, he was a little crazy, this guy. Cy she's cycling. She, she's cycling. Um, 
she's uh, on, I said, what is she cycling on? He's like, Winstrel. I give her uh, two milligrams of Winstrel tab every day in her food. I'm like, how do you get her to eat it? He goes, oh, I wrap it in, I don't know, cheese or some, some crap like that. <laughs> and, and the thing would like growl, this thing. <laughs> I said, I've never heard a rabbit growl. He goes, yeah, she's got roid rage. He goes, and I think her, oh I think her chorus is a little enlarged too. <laughs> I said, the this fact that you wouldn't even check, I said, is kind of disturbing to me. I said, you know. I thought human females were the only ones with animal with a clitoris. I, I don't even know if he was, if he, he was out of his mind. This guy. I think that's yeah. true. I think that the human animal is the yeah. only the, the 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 female human is the mm -hmm. only animal that has an organ specifically designed for her pleasure. I don't believe it. I, I think they all have to have it. This it's got to be there. It's just it's it's every every animal is pretty much the same, John. I don't think know. it is, to be honest yeah. with you. Maybe it's not as developed, but the, but it well, guarantees. I'm, I'm sure digital. somebody listening is an expert on yeah. this field. Vestigially the there, I'm sure. <laughs> all right, so I have to bring up this um this. This fitnessvault.com posted a, uh, I get, you know what they do? They kind of take interviews that people do and in Instagram posts, and they kind of just report on it. And I guess they they took something uh, Sergio Oliva Jr. was saying about his father. Let me see if I can pull this up. I wanted to get your opinion on this. Well, he was blackballed or blacklisted or some shit. I'm trying to say that he had a grudge with Jim Mannion. You know, when Sergio Oliva Jr. was competing, and when Sergio Sr., excuse me, was competing and winning the Olympia, which was what, 68, 69, something like that? Yeah. Jim Mannion was was still competing. He wasn't running anything. No. He was like, what, 20? If that. He was like winning shows in Pittsburgh. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know what, 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 what they're talking about. And I don't know if they took it you know, out of context or they didn't understand it. And Sergio did say, you know, back then it must have been hard. You know, my father was the first black Mr. Olympia. That obviously makes sense. And he said, my father was very bitter. He never, he, I'll never forget it. I ended up being uh, where Mannion went up. It, wait, it ended up being where Mannion went up to my dad. And again, we don't know what happened back then. I'm not going to speak about it. I have no idea. But Mannion was trying to drop the grudge. He stuck his hand out at the Olympia and my, at my dad and just... My dad just left his hand out there hanging. I'm watching this like I'm competing now. F you. It was so awkward. Jim Mannion walked away. I, first of all, Jim Mannion and I talked about, about this. Jim said it never happened. Now, sure. remember, when his father was competing, Jim Mannion wasn't even doing anything. wasn't even in control of anything. So it sounds more like like maybe Ben Weeder or Joe Weeder, this might have happened with. That would... the, the, the Mannion didn't come on the scene as a, the MPC didn't start until 1982. Yeah, yeah. So I this don't know is, what he's talking this is about. Ten yeah. years, twelve years, thirteen years before yeah. that. So yeah, this is stupid. You know, I, I, I think it's. I think once the name Mannion comes up, it's a pile on. You know, I mean. Yeah. You, the the, the Demelia sends me everything, you know, and the the yeah. one of the I'm sure he sends he sends you too. Yeah. The whole thing with bodybuilding legend Victor Richards is like calling out, you know, <laughs> bodybuilding legend. I mean, okay, yeah, all right, bodybuilding legend. But out of all the bodybuilding legends we have, you pick that one, you know, to to just and and what's he saying? You know, it's the same shit. You know, it, it's it's. The funny I, thing I, is that Victor had no interaction with Jim Mannion whatsoever. I don't know. Jim, Jim said you never even, I don't think even, even met the guy in person. No, you know? never met him, never had any interaction, never did anything with him, but yeah. bodybuilding legend, you know. You know what they do, these these sites, like I hate to say it, because I, I, like, I look at Fitness Vault, they have some, they, they cover a lot of stuff, they're on top of things, you know, but what they're doing is they report on what other people do. Right. So they go to other people's Instagrams and they just pull stuff from it. And sometimes the context of it gets muffled because they don't really know what, what what's being said. Or I think per, I think people purposely, you know, mislead the the reader because it gets hits. Right? It sounds more sensationalistic if you can say, "Oh, uh, Jim Mannion and, and the, the Sergio Junior uh, Senior didn't like Jim Mannion." I mean, right? For what reason? I can understand him not liking Joe Weider, right? Because he feels that maybe Weeder would favor Arnold, and you know, and, and and that's why he didn't win the Olympia again, which may or may not be true. We don't even know. Right, right. We weren't there. 
you know, but the truth of the matter is that, you know, Jim Mannion wasn't doing anything back then. That was before his time. But look, if he was running things, it would be a different story, but he wasn't. Exactly. It was, it was over a decade before he was running anything. So yeah. 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 Over 10, 10 years you know, more. So more, and more because 82, my, what was Sergio was what? 68, 69. I mean, come on. It's just too much. I think people then, thrive on 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 just stupidity and incompetence. I swear. Then they uh, uh, supposedly Sergio Jr. said the rule they used for Lee Priest being suspended uh, for him going over to the other federation was invented for my dad. A little history lesson: they used to be okay competing in both federations. My dad too. He definitely went out of his way to try to disrespect Arnold and Joe Weider. Um, I guess his dad did because his dad was pissed off at them. He did some guest posing in Mexico. He jumps off stage and he starts posing in Arnold and Joe's face <laughs> right, in the, <laughs> right in their face in the crowd. And right then, Joe makes a rule that you can't compete in another federation. And now my dad is suspended just for the Olympia, like suspended for two weeks. That's how smart Joe was. He allowed my dad to guest pose at the Olympia, I think, in 71. He still gets people to buy tickets to see my dad. But you can never have Arnold and my dad go against each other. It was smart. Arnold won the Olympia. My dad was suspended. And that's the way it went. Now, yeah, I mean, so that's Joe Weider. So that, you know, this all, the grudge would have to be against Joe Weider because Jim Manion right. didn't make these rules. Jim Manion didn't even run the pro league back then. No, nothing. He was in the water. Yeah, I don't know why they're saying Jim Manion. He, it, it's so stupid that I don't even know where this site got the idea that it was Jim Manion. So. Well, like I said, the, to, it, right now in this climate, the Manion is a buzzword. So, yeah. It's going to be clickbait. It's going to be, you know, he's he's the guy who's everybody's who's every everybody's after right now. Yeah, and you know, Bob Chicarilla might have been going around telling everyone that, that Lee Priest was banned or whatever. I don't know, but Lee wasn't. You know, Jim Mannion didn't ban Lee Priest. Wayne banned him. Yeah. Wayne didn't. Yeah. Wayne Demelia banned Lee. Not not yeah. not yeah. Mannion. No. And Jim actually, when I talked to him. He's like, I, I wish I would have seen Lee at the Olympia. I, I would have put him in a headlock and <laughs> taken a picture with him, <laughs> like he did to uh, Aceto, because he's, <laughs> a head, I, he's like, he's like. As a matter of fact, Jim Manning is the one who got Lee Priest's pro card. Yes, you're absolutely correct. He and and he's the one who who rallied from to come back in when when he, know, when he got unsuspended. Yeah, yeah. The funny thing, <laughs> the funny thing is, he said Jim told me the story. He was sitting on on you know how the golds had the that like upper level where the bikes used to be right. uh -huh. Paul Dillette would be up there. All the guys would sit up there and after they did their workout and they would just watch all the girls down below. Right. And Shin Mannion was up there. I guess he was in California when they doing cardio and he looks down and he sees this, this blonde young, you know, short guy training. He's like, who the heck's that? I never saw that guy before, you know, and Jim knows everyone. Right. So when he's done with his cardio, he goes down and he, and he goes up to me, he goes, you know, who are you? He goes, Oh, my name's Lee priest. He goes, yeah, how old are you? I think he was 19 or 20 right. or something like that. And he's like, you know, where do you compete? He goes, well, you know, I, I'd like to compete, you know, in the States here, try to get my pro card. Jim's like, you know, we only, you have to be a citizen here. He's like, um, how come you're not a pro? He goes, well, he goes, well, I did win the Mr. Australia like three times, but they won't give me, Paul Graham wouldn't give him a pro card because at that time they were giving no Australians pro cards because wow. they wanted to keep them all to themselves. So Mannion made a couple phone calls and uh, he got him his pro card. And Lee did the oh. Niagara Falls that year. <laughs> That's a great story. So, yeah, so I mean, Jim Jim really likes Lee. I mean, Lee, yeah, can Lee be a pain in the ass? You know, at, at, at times, and, and, and you know, he definitely opened his mouth. But most of his problems he had was with Wayne, right? Because he was always arguing with Wayne over prize money and stuff like yeah. that, which yeah. which valid valid things Lee said. I mean, Lee didn't care if you know if it would hurt his placings. He would say whatever he wanted, you know. Yeah, no, and, and and Lee and Wayne used to get along, you know. I mean, it's, it's, Wayne still owes Lee his Knight of Champions ring. Do you do you believe that? <laughs> he, oh, he never gave him the ring. No. <laughs> I know Wayne's listening to this too. Wayne, you better get Lee that Wayne, ring. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been decades. Wait, and he's asked for it. So Even if you get him one out of a gumball machine, uh, um, Wayne, he won't know the difference anyway. Lee just likes to wear it. That's all. I it's all it's, Wayne. Give him his freaking ring. Come on, everybody <laughs> else has theirs. Give, give him his ring. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, <good boy. laughs> so I I, I got to yeah. tell you, I got to tell you this insane story of frustration. Right. 
and All incompetency right. to, to to break things up a little bit. You, I need, yeah, well, we, we got to rant. A, we got to rant a little bit. Yeah, I know. I got to rant a little bit. Okay, so it says nothing to do with bodybuilding too, except that motorcycles and bodybuilders go together. So I'm I I got to get my front. I bought a new front rim and a new front tire, and I need to get them mounted right. So it's a 23 inch front tire, which is rather large. Biggest they usually run on a on an 18. It with the back is 21 in the front. I'm going a little bigger, so it's got that you know kind of big wheel look, but not over the not over the top. Right. So I'm not going to name the establishment, but it's 30 minutes away. I take my rim and my tire, which I've done many times before, and drive all the way over there because nobody near me mounts motorcycle tires, and I drop it off. So. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting back into the truck and the guy comes out the door and goes, John, wait a minute. We can't do this. I said, why? He goes, I don't have a 23 inch tube. Oh, fuck. Cause you, and it's spoke wheel. You need a tube. Otherwise the, all the air comes out the spoke holes. So I take my wheel and my tire back, put it back in the truck. I drive. I'm not going to buy the tube from, from them because they're going to charge me 50 bucks. I'll go to one of my sources and get it for 15. So, right. I buy the, I go online, I go to De Dennis Kirk or whoever, I buy, I buy my tube, tube comes two days later, I go back, yesterday I go back with it to all the way over there, 30 minutes with the tire, the rim in the tube, and I drop it off. So no problem, we'll get it back to you tonight. I go, I can't tonight, it'll have to be tomorrow because like it's just too far away, I got another trip out here tomorrow. No problem. Right. Six o'clock last night, the guy calls me, he says, John, we can't mount it. Yeah. Go, Why? He goes, we can't fit a 23 inch rim on our machine. I go, what? He goes, 21 is the biggest it'll do. I go, you didn't know that? <laughs> he goes, no one ever brought us a 23-inch rim before. So now I had to drive all the way back out there today, pick my unmounted tube tire and rim back up and drive home. Now I got to find somebody who can mount a 23-inch rim. Three trips out there for absolutely zero net gain. <laughs> so it, it almost sounds like a Jimmy the Bull story, to be honest with you. It, it, it kind of is, but you Except know he would have gotten he would have gotten a wheel lock on his on his truck when he got out, right? And he would have he would have got towed another time, and he, the, the wheel would have fallen off. <laughs> it would have been a lot more drama. Than, see, you actually probably escaped, you know, uh, you know, relatively un, un, unscathed in this. Uh, well, this the, the thing is. That's one line item, and you build a bike. I mean, it, this ha this is like every day I deal with some kind of crap. When you, you know, when you when you put a budget together, I, for example, I had this electronic control unit. I counted on it costing two hundred fifty bucks. Now it's four months later. I'm actually building the bike. Now yeah. that control unit's no longer available. They don't make it anymore. Yeah. The only one they make is the Bluetooth one, and that's yeah. five hundred bucks. Well, you got to so, get blue. You got to get Bluetooth anyway. So I mean, you're, you're going to want Bluetooth. You don't want to put all overkill. You know what this thing does? It's all on your phone, right? The the, the yeah. Bluetooth. So yeah. You can adjust the sensitivity on this thing. One of the 20,000 features that I'll never right, use it has. Right, right, right. As you walk up to the bike, you can determine how close you can get to it before it starts turning things on. Yeah, but like, John, think about that. When you sell the bike, it sounds like it's got, it's a good selling point. I got this Bluetooth feature that does this and this and this. You'll get, it might cost you an extra $300, but you'll make $1,000 on it on the sale of the bike. You'll be able to add no, on. No, you won't. You'll, you, you, not that much. You'll win. You'll, you'll, it might make more. You're right. It might make more. But the thing is, it's the it's it's the hours I wasted trying to find another. You know, I figured there's got to be how many people, John, that wouldn't buy back in the '90s a BMW because they didn't have a, a, a freaking cup holder in them. Right. Yeah. You remember? You remember the Germans refused to put cup holders in in, in the BMWs back in the '90s because they thought it was what? like ruining the 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 purity of the, the driving yeah. experience that you. And Americans with their cup holders, that's all they want to have is cup holders in their, in their car. But we have the best cup holders, right? And, and people drink coffee in the car. So well, you're not supposed but, to. But, but the Germans had the ashtrays in there, right? Because the Germans like to smoke cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. They well, don't want to put a cup holder, but a, a cigarette uh, lighter and a cigarette uh, tray was, was necessary. People don't even know what we're talking about because no one in their right mind would ever smoke a, a cigarette in their car except – you know, nowadays, back then they did. Well, you smoke wheat in the car. What's the difference? Yeah. So people would smoke. <laughs> my parents would smoke cigarettes. And I know what everyone's parents did in the car with the windows closed. They would crack. Cars. The my, father, 
My father smoked those fucking cigars, those, those <laughs> dinopolis, the Italian, the crooked ones, the black. They stunk so fucking bad. And he's got the window open this yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, this much. Yeah, this much. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't do anything, you know? And, of course, yeah. you know, he's, he's got one of the first cars in America with leather interiors. So you got, oh. you got that leather smell, yeah, yeah. The cigar smell. And, you know, we're in the back seat heaving up, you know, heaving Cigar smell a lot better than cigarettes. I got news for you. And, and the way the old um, uh, sedan, what they were sedan, like, what were the, what is it called when you have only two doors? A sedan, right? Coop, coop, coop. A coupe. They were, my parents always had these Oldsmobile coupes. So we, my sister and I would be in the back and they would have one, you know, it's one window. So when they, they cracked the window, all the cigarette smoke never went out the window. It just blew into the back seat. And <laughs> years later... <laughs> Because I used to tell my father, you're poisoning us. He's like, you don't know what you're talking Because they didn't even know about secondary cigarette smoke. Right. They figured if you didn't inhale it, it didn't matter. Years later, because I always knew intuitively, he apologized to me. He goes, you know what? I subjected you and your sister to the secondary smoke. I didn't even realize it was dangerous. I said, I knew it was dangerous. At 12 years old, I knew it was dangerous. I said, I was telling you and you would scream at me because you had the window open this much. And, you know, in those, those, <laughs> those coops, if you did open the windows all the way, which sometimes they did also, the wind would, oh, it would, yeah. it would get hit by a tornado back there with the wind. And it was never designed, to, no one was designed to sit back there. It was never meant, the, the, the aerodynamics of the car was horrendous. You no, know? yeah. You just throw shit back there. That, that's what it was yeah, for. Yeah. <laughs> no, but when, when, when he would light up that freaking cigar, it was, oh, I'm going to throw up. And we and when my, my sister, my brother, and I, one of us would throw up. Yeah. I mean, almost. Oh, they, oh was that bad? Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, it's horrible. Between that leather, I, I, between that leather smell and the cigar, it was all, but you're right. The Germans, the Europeans, they never cared about smoking in the car. It was always no. the cup holders. Cause cup holders. The, the Germans didn't, well, the Porsche didn't. I don't know about the BMW, but Porsche didn't put cup holders in the in their cars until 2002. The only reason I know that yeah. is because the Carrera I bought was the first year they had cup holders. And there was a big deal. They, had cup holders. I remember I had a BMW, a 97 BMW 850ci. I remember that 8, eight series with the, it had like a slant front. It was gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. I always wanted that car. I, I, had, I bought it like I was probably in 99 when I bought it. It was two years old. But it had this little, you push this button on the dash and this little thing flipped out. It was like this little measly thing that was supposed to hold the cup. But it never. If you put a if you put a cup of fluid, it always fell over because it, <laughs> it was not balanced. It was it was the worst thing, and that was their only. That was their. We'll give you a cup holder, you dumb Americans. That was it. And then eventually, obviously, nowadays they have cup holders because you know you have to have them. But they would they would not put cup holders for some reason because they believe you're supposed to drive. If you yes, want coffee, yes. you stop and have coffee, and you enjoy the coffee. You talk, you have coffee, and then you're done with coffee. You get back in the car and you drive while you're smoking a cigarette. So yeah. it, it, it's it's it was the whole driving experience. Look, the Europeans, especially the Germans, the Finns, um, the Swedes, they 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 look at driving the the, the, the people. All over Europe, they look at driving completely differently than we do. You have to go to school and to, to get a driver's license. You have to learn. In Finland, you have to go to two years of driving school before you can get a learner's permit. You know, they, and, they, and, they, and you know they produce really good drivers. You know, people ride drive on the right. They don't lollygag in the left lane. They do they do things correctly. So it makes sense that the cup holders. Wouldn't come out and told me. Hey, John, have you seen this car? I'm um, speaking of cars. It's called the Lucid. It's, it's a electric. all electric car. Yeah. This thing's got 1,200 horsepower. Yep. It's insane. Matter of fact, one of our listeners, Derek, who's who usually sends questions into Heavy Muscle Radio, he he works for them. He's like, if you're ever in LA, I'll I'll, I'll let you test drive it. You can drive it as much as you want because he works wow. for them. It's it's. It's unbelievable. I'm, I'm like, I'm so taken aback that they can have an electric car that delivers 1,200 horsepower. How is that possible? Even because those, because it probably has, uh, it has more than one electric motor. So I mean, right. like the Tesla, for example, you can get a two, a two motor Tesla, three motor Tesla. So that the Tesla Plaid S. Is, yeah. is like with the fastest car on the road. I mean, it goes zero to 60. This thing, this thing is three seconds. Yeah. 
That no less than three seconds. That is actually a nice looking car. Yeah, um, I, I I want it now. <laughs> it's only, you know it's only about 120 grand. It's not that expensive either. It's not bad, but here's the thing, Dave. I, I, I the performance is unmatched for the money. You can guarantee yeah. that. I just don't like two things about electric cars. One is the fact that you got to the charge time takes freaking forever. No, nope, 20 minutes. It's, it's something like 20 minutes to fully charge the car now. It not at not in your house. Yeah, at, at a charging station, the supercharging station. Uh, yeah, they have they have regular charging stations, supercharging stations, uh, and your home charging station that comes in two versions: the 220 volt, which is faster, and the 110. I researched this all because I was going to buy a Tesla, uh, and the the reason I didn't was because, I don't like the Teslas. I think they're crap. Yeah, you know, actually, that would build quality was was not the best. I would I would have to say. But the one I looked at. But the other problem is, where does the electricity come from? Coal. What am I doing? I'm, I'm trading one evil for the other. I'm not doing anything positive yeah. for the environment by taking by driving this car with 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 a cobalt laden, you know, fuel cell that has to, which is worse for the the environment than anything fossil fuel related. Twelve hundred plus horsepower. Five hundred and sixteen. Um, uh, miles on a charge it'll go and cool. it's 12 minutes to, to charge up That's to miles. how do we do that no look at this less than two seconds zero to 60 wow how is it possible to, to, to generate that much to move I, that car that fast with electricity I, I could, because of the torque that those electric motors have you put an electric motor at each wheel that, that has that adds up that's crazy though i you, you, I, I would like to drive it to feel it to six the, the the difference between an electric motor and and a combustion engine motor is an electric motor when you turn it on it's all on, right. So in an, or in a gas engine you got to like spool up you know you got to accelerate. So you can put tremendous loads on an electric motor with enough torque and you're gonna that thing's gonna be instant on the drag is gonna be minimal. But that's a that's a cool, and the range is tremendous. Like, yeah, Motor it. Trend Car of the Year in twenty two. I didn't even I know. I cannot that. believe that it charges in twelve minutes. That is, yep. a, because it, the new the the that Hummer that electric Hummer takes freaking four days. Yeah, I gotta get the Hummer. Arnold has the Hummer. <laughs> you think he still has that 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 diesel Hummer? Probably sitting outside of Seven Eleven at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> reading reading all the paper newspapers because. <laughs> Can't understand how you could read them on your phone. <laughs> it's amazing to me that they still print newspapers. It must be because for older people, I can't imagine it being. Uh... I was thinking that somebody asked me the other day. My son Max, he asked me, "Why do they still print magazines?" And I yeah, said, uh... "Because there is a dying group of people who still want to take a paper magazine into the bathroom with them." And right. they're going to die out. It's going to be eventually paper is going to disappear. It's almost gone now. But look at where look at where when we left muscular development in 2009, look at what's happened to the print magazine business since then. Destroyed. Yeah. Destroyed. Do you think oh. these Hummers are going to like catch on? They no. don't look as beefy as the old ones did. No, never. Never. Remember, that was like every bodybuilder had to have a Hummer. That, I, that's yeah. why I purposely didn't get one. But but <laughs> there were a, a lot of bodybuilders had Hummers that I knew. I always rode motorcycles. I was not the I was not the car driving bodybuilder. It was you know it was brilliant that Arnold got Hummer to do you remember to all the winners of the Arnold Classic would get the Hummers. Yeah, I mean that's a great marketing tool right yeah, there. Yeah, you got to pay the tax on it. Yeah, well, who cares? I mean, if you're winning, you're winning hundred grand anyway at that time. You know. Okay, oh, oh, you know, Jim Mannion told me a great fuck, a great Kai Green story. I got to tell this story. Okay. Um, it just it just goes to show you how how much Kai Green loves bodybuilding and doesn't really care about money. <laughs> I guess back in the day when you know Jim Lorimer was still running things, and Jim Jim called up Jim Mannion and he said, you know, hey Jim, what's up? Hey, what's up, Jim? He goes, um, you know, Kai Green hasn't cashed his check yet for. This was like a month after Kai Green won one of the Arnold Classics that he won. I think it was the 09 or 10. I think it was 09. And he's like, Jim's like, all right. Manny's like, all right, I'll, I'll find out. So Manny calls up Kai and he picks up, oh, what's up, boss? How was it? <laughs> you know, typical Kai. And right. Jim's like, yeah, yeah, Kai, you know, I just want to ask you, you know, 
Do you ever cash that check for the Arnold? Wait, wait a minute. Let me check. And Jim's like, he has him like rustling through like, like, <laughs> like, 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 like a gym bag or something like that. And paper, he has crumpling and this and that. And he says, oh, oh, yes, here it is in my gym bag right here. He's like, Kai, you got a $135,000 check in your gym bag? He goes, yes, uh, I forgot. I forgot to, I forgot to cash it. <laughs> like, Can you please go cash the check? He said, because, you know, screwing up their accounting. Jim Lorimer wants to clean up his books, you know. Oh, okay, no problem. <laughs> For a month, he had the check just thrown in his, it, like it was like a, like it was like a, a a ticket stub from the movies that he you know he he just went to see. I, I would have been I would have been camped outside the front door of the bank at seven o'clock in the morning waiting for them to open. <laughs> <laughs> was it a difference between Kai and me? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I said what would I said to Jim? I said what would Jay Cutler have done? What do you think he did with his check? He said he probably cashed it right in Columbus, Ohio. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have waited. The next morning he probably cashed it. I said yeah, I don't blame him. Yeah, I don't blame him. <laughs> exactly. Crazy, oh, crazy. All right. Well, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna wrap up this show, and then uh, John is gonna be joining us, uh, Leslie and I, on Iron Therapy to do a little. I think we'll talk about the the whole Leo um, episode on that show, and yeah, uh, to you appease guys, you guys who are so yeah. concerned over the fact that we haven't mentioned it yet, <laughs> even though we mentioned it on on. By, oh, right. by the way, we mentioned right. on after hours. The after hour show, remember I told you we were doing it live and it was like first green. Green means that you're you're, you're monetized. And then it went yellow while we were red, red. filming. And, <laughs> and then it went green again. And then it went yellow again. And it, it, two days later, we're, we actually got monetized. They actually let us monetize the show with all the crazy insanity. Really? Yes. Oh, and they my actually, God. That show was horrible that yeah. way. They, they, they let it go? They let it go. It's the weirdest thing. I, I never understand, like, why one show, like, is monetizable and one show is not. There's no... There's no rational. Actually, it's gotten almost thirty-five thousand views already. Probably by the time this show goes live, it'll probably be about forty thousand. So, yeah. it was a good, really good all, show. I thought. All of you, all of you concerned Leo people out there, yes, we did yes. cover his passing yeah. on the appropriate show yeah. after he actually died. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. After hours, yeah. right? No, no after, after he, we did not predispose and have a premonition that he was going to die and talk yeah. about it beforehand, yeah. so that we could be timely when to appease you guys. Exactly, you know, because so, you have to talk about things immediately. That's true before they actually happen. All right. Well, I, I got to go and buy a Lucid. I got to get my twelve hundred horsepower Lucid. Pull it into the driveway. <laughs> they only had an SUV. Don't they make an SUV with twelve hundred horsepower? That's what I need. I, you know, I don't understand this thing. I mean, car kids, seat. You, but wh why is it when you have a kid, you have to have an F SUV? I don't understand. You got to fit them in the car. That's why it, it, it's hard to fit them in with. And then you because the car, seat's oh, a car me, seat. it goes in the you, seat. No, no, no. Here, here's the problem. It and you because you never had three kids at the same time. You know, no, I do so, at the same time. Yeah. You, you back then, no one, no one even used seat belts back then, so you, it doesn't, it doesn't apply. <laughs> When you put them in the car, they got the, the the car seat in there, okay? So that's three seats right there. They got their iPads. They got, you know, 40 different things, you know, food, cup holders. And then you need room if you go shopping to actually put stuff in the car. So you, you got to have a back to the thing. So you, the SUV is the only thing that really is 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 works. Like if I got to go to soccer with these guys, and I got to bring all their balls and, and Chairs to sit down in. It, it, it's impossible to do it in a car. First world problems. When I yeah. was a kid, my mother said, look out the window. That's what you get. You don't even do <laughs> I I never I never remember ever wearing a seatbelt ever when I was a kid. There was no I, I remember belt. standing up in the seat with my hands on the you know, down the dashboard or in the back seat. <laughs> Hanging out the window with, with, <laughs> on the freeway, right? We, we used to run on the across the back seat, you know, because the it's amazing what's right. going on. All right, I'm wrapping up. All right, we got to go. Check us out on Iron Therapy. Uh, we'll be transitioning into that. Uh, thanks for joining us again. Any show topic ideas, put them in the comments below. If you hate us, too bad. If you love us, thanks for support. Yep. Talk to you next week.